So today, before we start our assignment, I'm going to show you, demonstrate for you how to start measuring from life, and which is the same thing you can use to measure something like this. Uh, so to do that, hold on, I'm going to spotlight myself. Woot. And then I'm going to turn the camera around. Hi, Leah. Hi. Good to see everybody. Um, so let's see here. And actually, maybe I will. All right. So if this is a still life that's set up, in fact, you can see my little cart here where I have all my ink supplies. There's my ink supplies, which we'll eventually use. And we've got this cup and this um. We've got this cup and we've got this vase. So you can't print this out, right? There's no way you can do that. It's a real thing. So now my question to you is, how? what is the first thing we're, how do we, when we draw this still life, what would be your instinct? What's the first thing we should do? Draw the outline? Um, before that, but yes. Before the before shape? That. Before, before the drawing shape, the shape of it? Before the shape, what do we need to do? Figure out look at the measurements of it. How yeah, find out the measurements. Find out the measurements and the vertical. I can already see Bettina doing it here. Here, hold on. Do that again, Bettina. I'm like laughing. She's doing it already. Here, I'm gonna add the spotlight. Yeah. So look at what Bettina. Hi, Sandra. Hi, Osiris. This yeah, is just an example. Right? We're gonna do the cheetah today. Yeah, we're doing the cheetah today. I'm just oh, getting okay, everybody just to practice. Me. Look at what Bettina is doing. Can you see what she's doing? She's holding her arm, and actually would help you, Bettina, if you can make your arm straight right, and not bent at the elbow. So stand back for enough notice. What are you doing, Bettina? Tell us, what are you doing? She's eyeing it. I'm trying to see the proportion. I was trying to see what percent por portion of the picture the cup is. Yes, A plus. That's exactly what I want you to do. So Looks I'm like gonna about half. So what she's doing and what you wanna do. Yeah, that's exactly right. So. The first thing we want to do is find the vertical distance, how high this is, right? And the way to do that is to determine, take the thing in front, right? And measure it. Now you can do this. I'm going to try and demonstrate this. You can see my arm. Can you guys, can you guys see my arm yeah. sticking straight up? So I am like actually taking my pencil, or sorry, my brush, and I'm putting my thumb near the bottom and my, um, the top of the brush near the top of the cup. And then I'm keeping my arm straight and I'm going up there. And you're absolutely right, Bettina. It's one cup length. So when I come back to my page, I want everybody to try and do this. I'm gonna switch things out. Oh, wait, I have another thing to add in here. Hold on, I need to go grab it. Bettina has pink on like me. Ha <laughs> ha. Oh. I have a question. Is drawing a still life that's on a screen really a still life or has it been flattened? What is that? It's still a still life. I mean, it's flattened. That's a great question. What does um, that mean? That it ha well, it's flat because you're looking at it through a camera's eye and not through your own eye, right? Mm -hmm. But the main thing is, I just think conceptually, you guys have been using the crutch of like printing out this paint and then trying to do measurements, which sometimes works and sometimes doesn't. Mm. My, my skill, the skill base I wanna teach you here is how to figure out measurements by looking at something, right? And standing eye. far away about. The real truth about drawing, this is it with drawing. The logic system of drawing is not the, to think about what you're drawing. It's to think about where things are in relation to other things. That automatic, I can see Bettina going, yes. Bettina, I've been watching you, by the way, as a writing teacher. 
I've been watching you understand these rules in a deep way. I can be watching you, but you, uh, I, I, feel, I feel like for you particularly, they're going ka-chunk, chunk, chunk. Because of course, writing is like this too, right? There are pieces they, uh, that you have to kind of put together visually, spatially. So <clears throat> I've been also, really thinking about this. Hmm? Go ahead. Yeah, I was just going to say, to, I, I've been thinking about it in terms of writing and how you become a good writer. And part of it is that to trust the writing process, you must let go of the product and let mm -hmm. and let your, I don't know if you call it subconscious, your instinct or your hunches, you need to let them take over and you need to be able to tolerate a mess that you know, you learn how to clean up later. Right. So I've been applying that to the right brain. So in other words, if you keep your right brain in control of your writing all the time, you actually can't break the blank page. It's very right. hard. Right. I took a but, writing course but, from Walter Mosley and he said the same thing. Bettina just said, but instinctively when people do creative things, Leah, you're creative. But I'm imagining everybody in here is creative to some degree. You, Your inner eye comes in. I don't really, because I get confused easily because I do have a mental problem. So I have to de rely on my inner stuff a lot more than most people. Well, because when I see, you know. But here's the interesting thing. There's a structure that you're unaware yeah. of. You're in, it's uh -huh. an invisible structure. So I agree, Bettina, that you have to let go of the process too much. But what you have to understand is the tenets and the rules of the structure of this particular logic system. And here's what's different about this logic system that's different from all the other ones that you learned. Verbal conceptual is about memorizing words, phrases, uh, associating them with pictures in your head, understanding how to pin words together, right? In a grammatic, structure. we spend 10 years, we spend years learning how to do it. Okay, the difference learning how to read means you need to learn how to not only do you memorize what words look like and how long they are, you learn how to string letters together. That is a what I would call a micro process. You have to work if you're you have to look at each word and figure out how each word is constructed to be able to bring it out into a sentence. Drawing starts with the macro. You have to know where everything is in relation to everything else or you can't draw it. Does that make sense? It's a macro process. It's about pieces and how they fit together. It's not about anything else. That's the underpinnings of the structure. And because we're not used to thinking structurally like that, it's a logic system that we have to train ourselves into just like we trained ourselves into reading or writing. It's a, that makes sense. I hadn't been thinking about that part of my being a writing professor because I don't teach at that level. Right. But you yeah. but but you do have an innate sense of I believe that people who are good writers have an innate sense of visual stru spatial structure. You know how much time it takes to like convey different things and what that physically looks like on a page. You may not be consciously doing it, but you're unconsciously doing it. So right. what I'm trying to do is explain the logical underpinnings of this process, why it's so difficult, why everybody freaks out so much about it. But it's really not that different than trying to learn to read, right? There's a whole set of rules and you have to spend years doing it. And so this is the underpinning. So here's my next question. All right, if this indeed, this cup, is like, so to find the vertical distance of the cup and now say the banana, how do we find once, uh, how do we find the distance to the left that the banana goes? What do we do there? Why don't you, you guys take a look, use your pencil or your, Sandra, you should be trying this because this is good practice um, for you. When it was the question, how do you measure what with your eye? How do you find out the bird, the horizontal distance of the banana? How do you know how far it is, how, how wide it is? By using the, the distance of the other two pieces or something. Yes, so tell me. Do it and tell me how far to the left does a banana go based on the distance of the two pieces? Look at what Bettina's doing. <laughs> Sorry, Bettina, I have you up as a, as a demonstrator. Because you it's can see- It's going around you, the bottom. It looks like it's halfway, just like the mug, right. like the center I'm of the mug. Like halfway it's around the bottom of the base or something. Uh, let's see. To it's me, like, it's like I, half. 
it's the distance the size it's of the color. from the center line it goes out half the distance of the total distance from the bottom of the banana to the top of the so you're measuring this to that so i'm measuring are you from doing the bottom, this to that from the i'm bottom. doing the left to the right to the left yeah, let me do it again. I don't yeah. know. Yeah, keep your arms straight. I love it. Sorry, Bettina, I'm going to keep you as a measure because I can't actually get myself on here to show you this. I think um, banana no. is the distance. So, it's, so once head. you've determined this distance, right? You've determined this distance, right? We got this one. This is twice the height of the cup. So we can determine the cup and then just go up one height. So now we have our vertical distance. Now we've established our vertical distance. So how far to the, so so how wide is the banana, I guess is the best way to put it. It's as simple as two, two times cup. Height. Yeah, it's basically the, the banana to the distance of the banana is the same as the vertical distance. Yeah, got it. Do you wanna try, so let's remove this. Let's put this thing down. How many? Now what is it? Tell me the wow. measurement. It's in the center. Of the ink bottle to give me the vertical distance. I don't know. I don't know how to think like that. <laughs> it's uh it's a it's it's a it's a it's a hard thing to grasp. Hold your do what Bettina's doing, Osiris. Hold your pencil out and measure. Line up your thumb. If you can't do oh, it, you can't. Gone. what are we doing now? You're yeah. measuring. I'm asking you how I don't that doesn't do anything. The, how high up is the how how do I find the vertical distance of the still light? I don't know because I'm used to using my eye. Uh, it's like okay. three times the height of the ink bottle, isn't it? It's three times the height of the ink bottle. But I got two. Yep. Where are you getting three exactly. from? Where, <clears throat> where is the three going? Well, how do you get? That? I want you to look again you at what I'm doing here. You use your pencil. Look at what you're yeah. doing here. Look at what Bettina is doing. She's yeah, using... but where, how do you know it's a three? I don't know all of that. How do you know? measure? Okay, so I need to, so I need to. Okay, so Osiris, I want you to follow very closely to what I'm saying. I want you to try and watch it. All right. And the trick here is that I can't really show you because I'm standing in front, but I am holding my thumb. I'm holding up my, my pen straight, my bamboo pen straight. And I'm putting my thumb at the bottom of the ink bottle. And I'm putting, sorry, it's like, this is a really awkward angle for me, which is why my hand is kind That's of shaky a little bit. <laughs> um, there we go. So see my thumb is at the bottom. Of, I'm not touching my ink bottle. I wonder if I can come back here and do this a little bit better. The my thumb is at the bottom of my ink bot of the ink bottle, and the top of the 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 um the top of the bottle is at the top of this. Mm -hmm. So if I keep my arm straight and I go up, I can find. Oh, you're getting one, two, three, like that. Yes, that's what I'm doing. And okay. so every lesson. So let's try this again. How many water jars? One. No. Two. <laughs> what no. did you say? How many water no, jars? No, two and a half how, many jo how many water jars is the height of the, uh, is the height of that face? Two. Isn't it one? Nope. Nope. Um, oh, I see. If you're starting from the base. Okay. So if you're start. oh yeah, fair enough. So if you're starting from here, yes. It's two. If you're including this as one super object, yes, absolutely. Sandra, you're right. Also, okay. two and a half is right. Because if you're going to be establishing the vertical distance of any still life, this is the bottom and this is the top, right? So yeah, it's either if you're going to measure exactly one, two, but if you're going to a better way to think about this is not to think about each object separately, but to think about the objects together. Uh, one more, one more time. We're going to keep practicing this because you guys need this, right? This is the practice that you really need. And this is how, tell me how many, from the bottom of the still life to the top, how many cups is it? Two. Two. Exactly. 
So when you come to your, does anybody else get anything different? <clears throat> does that make sense to people? We'll continue to practice this idea, but this is the way of thinking as a drawer. Here, hold on, I need to remove the spotlight here and flip this back. This visual spatial thinking, okay, this is like, drawing. This is all it is. This is the underpinning of the logic system you're trying to learn. You can always, that's why I always like draw a physical vertical distance in and you try to figure out where the halfway points are. You can totally do that. Doing this, right? It's it. And, and Sandra, although I appreciate you're following the letter of the law, exactly what I said, you did exactly what I said, right? With like, what's the size of the cup to the to the actual picture, it's or when we did the jar, how many is it? Um, I want you to not think about pitcher and cup. I want you to think about vertical distances. Where's the top of the? I want you to think. So of we're painting the whole the whole thing, not just yeah, the jar. Yeah, right. if you start with the details, then you you think of them separately and you start drawing them separately. Does that make sense, you guys? I mean, I know you're all there. I know you're all on some level doing this anyway. Um, and what I realized was we were not like here. So I'm going to pop up here. What I And you can do this with this screen. I'm marking it down so you can see it. But you can do this with this screen. You do not have to print this out. And often printing it out is confusing because you print it out at a different size, at a different level, a different orientation, right? And then you get confused. And I'm like, well, <laughs> that's like, uh, I, I notice people trying to do a lot of one-to-one -one transmissions. When you do it like this, you don't, you do this, you don't need to worry about that. Because now the next thing I do with this still life, once I determined the distance, is I draw a vertical line and I divide it in half, right? Because now I know that's where the cup starts and that's where the pitcher ends. And then I use, because I've established these two, I know they're reliable, right? I know those measurements are reliable and it doesn't matter how big or small it is. I can make my cup this small, I can make it this small, right? As long as the proportions are the same, then I can use those proportions to determine what's happening why, widthwise, right? These are the reliable proportions. These ones, these two, these two become the thing upon which I measure everything else. Does that make sense? It's kind of like simple, actually, but it's uh, but 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 we have to fight the other logic systems, which are trained differently, that are training us to look really closely at something and determine little differences to it, right? To exaggerate the differences, really, so that we can see them, to define something so that we know what it is, right? But with visual spatial logic, that's not the first thing we do. The, the things that we're drawing come out after we determine where they are. And once you really get this, you will not understand how anybody else can draw. Because anything, because you could, because you're like, and people who are kind of quote unquote good at drawing and train themselves to draw, aren't, don't do this. And so they hit a wall where they can't draw better. I mean, that's just the way it is. Occasionally somebody can kind of push through, but it's really rare. Most people kind of get stuck and at this kind of halfway place. And because they're better than the pe most people in the, you know, the, the whole logic system is, is flawed, right? They don't understand what the building blocks are. And that's what I'm trying to tell you. It's an interesting, um, uh, it's an interesting way of thinking about it, right, this way. And that's the thinking that I'm trying to promote because in my mind, just like during learning to draw and learning to read really, um, how do I say it? It really changes your life, right? It opens up all these other things. So can learning to draw open up your, observ your observatory senses. It's like just having another analytical tool and because you're doing you're focusing on different things than on the other analytical tools that you've mastered um it really expands what you can do but we also fight it because it's not what we're used to doing that makes sense excellent all right so let's start
with a chicha. We're going to be working in ink. So, so based on that principle, <laughs> where's the halfway point of the cheetah from top to bottom? Well, I guess really it's- In the center uh, where his eye is to the right. No. Well, what's, what's the halfway point? The, ver oh, the first thing we're going to do is find the vertical distance, right? So there, there. I'm going to draw it here because this is halfway down the center of his face. It's not like halfway. Vicino would say. What's that? Like maybe the chin of the mouth. Can you, have you measured it? Are you measuring? Well, I'm measuring it with a thing. Okay, so you're cheating. I don't want that measurement. No, 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 I'm measuring it with oh. my pencil. Okay, there you go, there you go. <laughs> Let me see. But it's, no. it's this pencil. Yeah, no, I'd say it's a little bit higher than that. So here's the top, here's the, here's the, here's the line, here's the top, here's the bottom. Where's the halfway point? It's kind of, anybody have any ideas on this? Where's the halfway no. point? Try your measuring. Try stepping back from the screen and measuring with your pencil. I don't Maybe know. The mouse, it looks the like it's right by the curve where his yeah. eye is curving around. Right there. Past right there. Yep, right here. Absolutely. Now notice how when one guesses, we try to make it neat, right? We try to make it like, oh, it's down by the chin or it's down, right? Like this. I guess technically you could say bottom of the nose. There's the halfway point, right? So now we know when we sketch out our, our little guy over here um, that we have to, that this halfway point is right where his nose sits, right? And then in terms of the vertical distance, you can almost box that off, right? What's the vertical distance? And, and if I want to, I can also find that at quarter points, which I can do. Right. These quarter points are helpful. They show me where. Yeah. They show me where this line, this shape is, right? Where the background kind of the light background kind of intersects. They show me kind of where the eye is lined up. If I draw this across, they show me that the eye is kind of lined up just above that. Like there's a few things. And it can also help me with the vertical, with the horizontal distance. So how, how like wide is this? It's one and two thirds. What do you, any other answers to that? Let me look. I'm looking. Three quarters. Three quarters. It's three quarters. So this is here. So when I come and I sketch this, oh, and then the last Oh, uh, sorry, it's because I was doing it with a half thing. Yeah, it's yep. half and three percent. Yeah, yep, yep, yep. So when I, and the last thing I'm gonna check is like one, two, oh, there's another nice little measurement here. Mm. Two, this is exactly one third of a way across the, the right? This is one third of the it way. It looks like one third. Yep. It does it's a little weird on the screen because the lower oh. right hand corners goes out. Here, it's hold not on. straight. It's it's pretty straight. You're focusing. So what's happening? That there's a straighter line. It's pretty straight. Uh, part of the problem is I had the camera curved a little bit. Now you can see it a little bit. Yep, yep. Right, one, two, three. This is mostly straight. So one of the things that you're doing, uh, Bettina, is observing teeny little minute details. This is not the moment for that. This is generally, you're gonna exaggerate the size of that curve. It's a little bit curved. It's not really that much curve. It's no, that wasn't bit. what I was seeing. Oh, it was what were you saying? That, that, that if I looked at the overall printed page on the screen the way it was appearing to me is that oh it yeah was, it was i didn't have it straight cold. i didn't have yeah. it straight it's straight now it's straight now sorry that You're was my bad uh yeah obviously so now i have to make this so good observation there good observation i was still <laughs> struggling with whether the the part to to the left of the center line was one third or one fourth and i couldn't i got imagine. you 
I got you. You got it. Okay, so now we can see it's like one third. So this is what I'm going to do with my pen. Oops. Paper for. So I'm going to do this. I'm looking for a little paper that I can use this. Test. I got so caught up in that draw that measurement thing that I forgot to get ready for my test. Okay, I have a little just so that you can see down here. I have some test paper. Um, a little bit trick. I guess I can do this so you can see it. I've got water and a brush. I've got my brush wet. And now I'm going to dip my brush in ink and then dip my brush in water. So here I'm dipping my brush in the ink. I really, what I really need is a third camera that pans out. I want my ink to be about this watery as I'm starting out here. See how it's very light and watery. And then I've got to come over here. And since I've got this up here, why don't I just end, I'm going to just end my drawing here so that that's easier to see. And I'm going to bring, I'm going to come over to the left side and just determine that here is the top of my cheetah and here is the bottom. I'm not going to draw the line because I don't want uh, if I'm working with ink. But here's my bottom, here's my top, and I'm going to find. I'll do dots for my halfway points. I'm going to find my halfway points, and I'm going to find. Is that right? One, two, three, four, and I'm going to find my quarter points. And if I put this to the left, I know that I'll have room. And then if I come over. Here, Okay, so I'm gonna start with that, right? I'm gonna, and I've randomly defined this. In fact, I've made it smaller because, and I'll move all this in a minute, but I've made it smaller because I know that uh, I need to put up my, I'm gonna to need to uh, have space for testing down here. But I could also make it bigger, right? And then I know that this length, is three quarters of the height. So I've just measured the height here with my pen. See how my finger at the bottom here is put to the bottom and the top is lined up at three quarters. I can come over here. Okay. Slightly awkward, this process. I'm gonna mark it and then I'm gonna recheck it. Oh, I made it too big. Let's put in a little bit this way. Yep, that's three quarters. And then I'm gonna check and see that, that this is divided into thirds. So I've given myself these points. Nobody. I, it, it's funny, it feels very tedious when you're learning it or when it doesn't make sense, when you're when the, the logic of it doesn't make, when the logic system isn't clear. But I feel like you guys are getting to the point where this logic system is becoming more clear. So once you structure that, <clears throat> then I'm able to do these, right? And not only am I able to do these, I'm able to kind of use these other points to help me figure out where things are. Um, so I'm gonna draw this guy in. This is where my, well, it's gonna be small for me. Mine's gonna be small today, right? Because well, I don't, hmm. okay. there's my boundaries. My borders, I'm not going any bigger than that. And then over here, with my inky brush, I'm drawing in that negative space. And then I'm coming down here. Here is where the paw starts to come in, lined up over here. And then if I come over here, I can see that down here is where that line starts. So the line kind of starts here. And then it curves over like that, uh, maybe more like that. 
I may have to adjust that a little bit. Then I can see over here, there's another. So notice I'm not even treating this subject as one set of shapes. I'm actually kind of constructing it. And then I can see that down here is where the pot ends. Oh, I can also see that here is where my light floor meets my darker sky. Just to show you. And I got to tell you, this feels to me too small, but it is small. It is smaller, but these yeah. proportions are correct. They are correct. Oh, wait, and there's a little thing here. Um, I'll send this over. You, I'm hoping you guys are working bigger because I think it's more fun to work bigger. You can get more detail in. But notice, <laughs> that's so funny. Um, and I'll take a picture of this. And I'm going to take a picture of both things, actually. I'm going to take a picture of this to show you. So, what I do here is kind of give you this crutch of drawing these in, but what I'm trying to do is free you to see how to find those yourself, right? And how to find any measurements, really. Oops, my, my MD. <laughs> Even smaller. I'm giving myself such a small, which means I think I brought this, I can see here, I brought this in a little bit too far. So let me look again, this. See how I corrected? So I have my paws big enough. See how I corrected this? I'm not worried because it's watery, it's light. You kind of paint over other things. Um, yeah, um, and uh, Bettina, I don't mean to like say, hey, this is what you're thinking, or this is what, because maybe this is not what you're thinking. But I can see by where your questions are leading, they're leading to the kinds of questions that I had when I went from being a writer to being a painter. Mm -hmm. I began to observe these associations, these structures that aren't, that we aren't aware of that are kind of directing how we see things, right? Uh, how we observe things, how we parse things out. Every time we add a new tool, I mean, and like I said, imagine your life if you couldn't read. Uh, it, you would be frustrated probably all the time. Your brain would want to, but you wouldn't know how because you really need to be taught to read, right? It's not something you can do on your own. You cannot teach yourself to read. There's too many rules and too many structures. Um, you'd have this kind of frustration and sadness all the time and your life would be very limited because you, there was information that you were missing. So this right brain that we are, we are exercising, it's the same idea, right? It's the same concept. We're starting to exercise things in a different way. I see in people a un, almost universal sadness that they think they can't draw. I see that it's a very like, um, uh, and I think it's because the brain wants to, <laughs> but it's not going to. Um, once you've done that, here are some of the inner lines, and then I'll probably move us over to the next phase. So once we've got these, oh, there's a little bit here. So Leo, with what you're saying, I remember reading something, I think written by Annie Dillard, and she mm -hmm. mentioned that when people who have been blind for art and have never seen somehow get sight back, 
Right. They can't see anything. They, their brains actually don't know how to organize what they're seeing. Yeah. Like we imagine that all of a sudden they can see everything and it's like, we it's great. Yeah, no, they have to spend a lot of time. It's confusing. It's just all this extra sensory. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Uh, I uh, when I first got to Portland, uh, the guy I dated for a year and a half, another artist, was born deaf, and he didn't learn to talk. I mean, they didn't figure out for the first year. So for the first year, the stimulation, um, he didn't know how to talk because he couldn't hear. In fact, a lot of the brain research they're doing is among the mute and the deaf because there's what you can tell what happens. And the way he learned to talk, it was a trip. Like he put his hand, if you put your hand to your throat you'll, and talk, you'll feel a buzzing, a little buzzing sound. That was the thing ultimately that stimulated his brain processes to begin to be able to talk. Wow. Yeah, and he remembers it. He remembers it being super hard. And then all of a sudden it was like a floodgate open and it all happened. So the brain needs to be stimulated with certain practices. Uh, the other thing that mimics this idea is um, cursive writing, copying sentences from a board. That has disappeared from the American, like, I don't know if it's disappeared from the British school system or any other school system but it's certainly disappeared from the american school system i didn't think of british i never did, did for british right yeah we did cursive you do cursive and cursive. you have to copy oh. yeah i did when i was a kid and the french right the french probably do it right like yeah, anyway cursive. we did it when we were kids we had to look up and copy something from the board onto our paper a hundreds of times and that happens between the ages of like five and nine five and, or five and five and seven maybe that's where the real focus is oh that's funny five we, we had to write everything like that yeah yeah you I'm had like, to copy everything. things down because no, we didn't copy things down anything you wrote it had to be in cursive um well but my point is i'm talking about a very specific exercise i'm talking about when oh. you're first learning to write and you're looking at the board and you're copying a sentence and you copy it a bunch of times. So that has been removed from the American curriculum as far as I can tell. And it's a terrible thing because it's the absolute stimulation of the right brain process. So we start losing, losing our, losing the game at seven when we stop copying things off the board. Everyone thought it wasn't creative. I'm like, oh my God, you've just killed the biggest creative process. So there are certain things that will stimulate the brain to start working. And that is one of them. And that's kind of what we're practicing here. Such a funny thing. All right. And then when you're done, I'm still dipping my brush. I'm testing. What is the here. reason they, they're removing that? Well, yeah. they said it wasn't creative. They said it wasn't oh. stimulating creativity, which is bullshit. That's who? Why who are they? Who are they? Educators. Educators. Oh. The people who are designing the education system and making these decisions. I think wow. they also uh -huh. did. They, they, I think that, I mean, my daughter in, in New Jersey, starting in third and fourth grade, Not had to be an informal writing uh, that was word processed, right? Yeah. So formal writing used to be a, a you know, your neatest cursive. Right? Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, to yeah. Try to make it, but but they defined it as, as word processed early. And yeah. we're very proud of providing computers in the classroom for that. Yep, yep, mm. yep. It was a decision that was made because they thought creativity, because educators thought creativity wasn't, it was stifling creativity. And really, that's why Americans are dumber and dumber. Oh, the time. It's, it's bad. It's bad, it's bad. I'll tell right? you we people from other countries, that. and those, my friends are visiting from Croatia. And they they came to reality, but when you talk to people from other countries and their kids are speaking three or four language and have command, it's embarrassing. I I was I'm embarrassed. Yeah, I don't know what's going on over here. Yeah, the whole slavery. Well, thing, I, I think we know what's going on over here. It we're crippled, by, <laughs> we're crippled because we did slavery. That's why. Yeah, you're right. We're and crippled. Now we don't want to face. Get past the truth it. Nobody it. wants to deal with it. 
Nobody wants to deal with the truth of that and how they benefited from They're that. Mess. Absolutely yeah. right. So the the way to deal with that is to go la 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 la. It's like yeah. not learning to read, right? It's like <laughs> not learning to read. If you're absolute God, you just nailed that one on the head. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um you're taping, Leah. Hmm? You're recording. That's fine. Honestly. If I can't say absolute fucking lutely about slavery, we won't say it. I scourge. won't tell. I, I if I can't say that about I'll that never, thing, uh, what can I say? What can I say it about? I mean, mm -hmm. it's a terrible, terrible thing, and it deserves every sort of terrible thing that uh, you know. It just needs to be called anyway. I'm not worried about it. Um. So once we get in here, maybe we'll do a few of the we'll kind of identify a few of the features. So you can kind of observe that the eye is in is a little bit up it's from the, here. And it's at a slant and it's it's contained within this box. If there was a box that we could draw, there's the eye. Kind of like lined up with this. It's closed. In his eye shut on the right side? Yes, but he's still an eye. <laughs> See, like your left brain that... is uh, getting in the way of this exercise for you, uh, Osiris. It doesn't matter where the eye is closed. closed I don't have eye. a left and a right brain. I keep trying to tell yeah. you that. <laughs> you know, let me just share some with you. Yeah. When I took an IQ test and went to college, I couldn't pass the test. I've never, ever clinically been able to pass an IQ test or anything. But if you put me in a calculus class or something abstract, I can I can get it. do it. All right, well then take this abstract idea to heart. Yes, there's an eye and it's closed. It doesn't matter if it's open or closed. Don't <laughs> let the shape of the eye, don't let the shape of the eye confuse you. Yeah. It's just okay. where it is. Don't let the shape of the eye become a, a barrier, right? Because part of your brain is going, wow, the eye is, how do I draw that, right? <laughs> Eyes are open. <laughs> how do I draw that? The eye is closed. I'm kind of identifying it here. I'm coming down here. And then I'm kind of going straight. And notice how light this is, because I don't, there's a, some light areas here. I don't really... I don't want to muck with them too much. Sandra, this is just the perfect exercise. Thank you so much for providing it. It's really, there's it just not different. that much like bright darks. There's so many nice light dark contrasts here. You can oh, count on me for animal pictures. Yes, ma'am, we can. <laughs> and I am, so you can see here, I'm going in and I'm getting this, um, um, and, and here's what I mean, whatever I'm saying, like, don't think about what it is. Here's what I really mean. What I mean is the brain kind of shuts down around the idea of, um, oh my God, I don't know how to, that's an eye that's shut, or that's a leg that's coming toward me, or that's hair, or that's fur, or that's blood. I don't know how to do that. That is a left brain response. After a while as a drawer, as an artist, you start to realize, wait a minute, I can figure this out, Yeah. right? I can figure this out it, because it's not about what it is. It's about what in this particular case, what, what like? is the shape of the thing? <laughs> so see how I'm starting to add in the nose, but I'm not just looking at the nose. I'm looking at like what's happening between the nose and this dark stripe. So. What I automatically did was start to move this over a little bit. And my biggest challenge in this particular exercise is I'm painting so small that I'm gonna constantly be making things stupid, right? I'm gonna constantly be wanting to like move things uh, in a place that they're not. So my biggest challenge is to figure out how to, how to short circuit that. And I do that by, as I add in an element, yeah, and this is a little bit too wide too. So as I do this, as I add an element, sketching them very lightly, I can see that the nose is actually probably here. 
in closer than I will. I mean, Mr. Ray Charles, when I worked for him for a whole year here, he probably one of the what is one of the most brilliant people I've ever seen, and he was blind. You yeah, know, right. but he yeah, he developed that machine in Vegas for blind people to gamble. <laughs> oh my he God. developed a chess of board us to service was <laughs> for blind people to play chess. He did a lot of stuff. Well, because he had because he earned right money and he could do that. It's like yeah, Michael J. Fox with Parkinson's. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like yeah. thank God it, when it happens to somebody who has money. Yeah, they like, can right, handle it. Right? They can handle it. Can you see how I'm starting to like kind of sketch the paw? We'll get to the place where I'm going to quickly, we're going to move beyond what we can see. But what I want you guys thinking about is we're just sketching and maybe get to this point with your very light ink. Notice I've got this big smudge here. It's totally problematic. I'm going to have to fix it. But I'm going to do that later. Um, and I know I can fix it because I can make this darker so that this appears lighter. I can get rid of this line. I can also use my pen. Mm -hmm. These, mm -hmm. This, Sandra, this, and this picture, I'm just realizing why I love this picture so much. It reminds me of Hermes. He mm -hmm. has a, Hermes, Hermes has a kind of like cheetah-like look to him. Yeah, particularly when he's sleeping. Cats are cats. I was worried, the only thing that worried me about this picture is that he looks like he's sleeping. Yeah. Then how could he sleep in that position? And so when you oh, see a photograph oh. like that, you think, okay, you kind of don't quite what see what's going on. But when you, if you do a he, painting like this, he, people are going to say, what a weird pose. Why would you paint he, something so blendish? This is looking good, Osiris. Okay. What am I doing wrong? One, two, no, you're good. I think he's cleaning you're good. himself. Um, yes. Yeah, I think, think so too. Himself. It's a more active pose. You're right. You're right. I think he's uh, washing his face. Right. I'm hoping he's Great. washing his face. He That's what I'm hoping he's doing. You. Great. I'm sure he is, Sandra. I'm sure he's not hurt or something. Yeah, Sandra, this, oh, no, that, you guys, good. these are great observations because you're right, because this, now that's a right brain, a proper right brain observation, because you're looking at like this angle and seeing how active it is, right? Mm -hmm. You can see it. You can see. Now, if this was like all one color, maybe it would look like he was laying on the ground, but he's clearly lifting himself. You're right. So he can't possibly be sleeping. He's cute. He's a cutie. I don't, I don't know. He, he could be, but it's, I agree, it's an active, but the feeling, it's, the sense they, that you're- They usually do that when they clean themselves. So. Yeah, and what you're, um, what you're looking at is this, right? This. Well, is, no, you're looking at the eyes. Course, what makes you think he's sleeping is that the eyes are closed. Right, Both but what eyes makes are you closed. think he's not is that this paw is pushing up. Is that it's, and this is that is it's not comfortable to sleep It's active, like it's active. He's pushing up, yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Great observation, too. But he's as Wonderful. cute as a bun. He is cute as a bun. He's so cute. Have you guys seen on IG all the wild animals they're starting to domesticate? What's going on with that? What? I mean, people are keeping wild animals like cheetahs and all that. Well, they've I always have always done that, unfortunately. Yeah, it looks like it's more or something. I've never noticed it more. I just think you're seeing I don't more. think it's more because I think more states are regulating against it. But Texas, yeah. for instance, you can have tigers they can them. have them in all of that now in the law you can do it I well, think there's no, no law I mean, prohibiting they're regulating it. against it more and more they're banning it more and more so mm -hmm. i don't think it's happening more and more i think it's happening less and less but there are places like texas where you are allowed to keep tigers that's such a weird no, thing I see more of it on ig that's why i'm asking that's why i'm asking i don't know what no, IG. it's not more instagram. instagram it's not it's not more oh cyrus you're just seeing it more I'm just yeah, seeing exactly. it more. You're just seeing it more. It's always, listen, when I lived in Armenia, there was, there were freaking like uh, oligarchs that would keep, you know. I know, that's also the case in, in, like in Colombia. And the, the yeah, car, it's all over. It's always the drug you're just seeing I didn't know it. That. See, I didn't know that. I'm but in America, that. in America, I think uh, even 20 years ago, there were more pet tigers in America than there are in the world. Wow. Really? Yeah. That's creepy. That is creepy. It's not right. 
Well, they look so adorable. I mean, come on, they're like. I mean, I guess maybe they just learned. Then something goes wrong when they get wild animals (laughs) neglected. Right. Mm. A lot of them end up in shelters. I mean, not shelters, like that's a a rescue places. Yeah. People don't Um, know. You know, it's interesting because people also have this sense. There have been many times, as like the internet grew, I remember, as like the access to the internet grew, I remember people feeling like there was a lot more violence and crime. Now, I think right now there is because of after the pandemic, but for a long oh, time, yeah. things were less violent, but everybody thought they were more violent, quite simply because they could see it. So, so to- that's yeah. why like just looking isn't enough. We need more information to be able to parse through. We need more analytical skills, right? To be able to parse through everything that we're seeing, to understand yeah. what it is. Just because you can see it doesn't mean it's not more or less. Well, it's real, but it, is it more? Is it less? Do you have a sense of the expanse of it? No, that requires a little bit more um, investigation. The other day, yesterday, I saw a picture of an eagle fly, like back, like uh, breast stroking in the water. Oh, I saw that, I think. I wow. know. I blew a video. I was like, what the hell? So we looked it up. Apparently, when eagles fish for something in the water, they breast that once they grab it, they drown it. Okay. <laughs> so they're like uh, skimming the water. Yeah, they, they, drown, they, 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 they drown it. They drown it. Yes. They even do it with fish. If they pick them up by the gills, I cannot imagine how horrible this is for the fish. But like this is like the fish's biggest nightmare. Fish. Right? They even just watching it, you're like, what? He's clearly not. First, you think somebody's caught the eagle, but then you realize, oh my God, no, he's just like breaststroking in the water powerfully. <laughs> he's powerfully. So <laughs> there's a lot of things we're all like, what is it? Is he drowning? Is he blah, blah, blah? Is this normal? No, we actually have to re- we have to look up who knows about eagles to find out what's actually happening. The information is there, but like just seeing the picture, right? That's not enough information to give you a sense of what's going on. Um, maybe that is also what I love about drawing. It challenges constantly because we're macro, we're thinking about the bigger pieces before we think about getting in the details. We are constantly challenging ourselves to un- to stop our, our, our uh, assessment of what we think is happening, right? Mm-hmm. And, and deal with what's actually happening. How big is this face? How big is the eye? How those are the first questions we're, 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 we're answering. That's a fantastic analytical tool. Um, weirdly, I kind of like this sweet little piece. And my question for you, oh, did I, it's my hand here. It's a frozen. Uh, sorry, guys, did I freeze for a second? Just yep. as well. Just a second. My hand, I can see my hand totally blocking your. Yep, yep, I just got to it out. Hang on, I'll be back. One second. There we are. Come on, come on. There we are. No, oh, why aren't you coming back? Where's the thing? Hold on. I'm coming back. Whenever my internet like goes. All right, let me sorry, let me pop this back up. My question to you guys is do you want to send me what where you are, or do you want me to just um do you want me to just switch to the next code where you can see more details? I just messed things up, so I'm doing it again. Okay, well, that's the great thing about ink, right? Oh, well, thank God I was in pencil still. Yeah. You know, that looks great. Look at how you've already got sense of lion, sense of cheetah. Look at how much you've already got that without even any details. Yours looks better than mine. I don't know, Bettina, you want to teach this class? You're telling me. Bettina, get up there. Get up there, Bettina. No, I really love it. I love seeing that. I oh, love yours. It. Bettina, Julia, that looks great. These look great, you guys. Um, you wear shapes, Bettina. They're just like. Yeah. Shapes. Yeah. I love both of these. I like that both of these are constructed so beautifully. And, and here's what I really want to emphasize. I am showing you a process, but I'm kind of stumbling through it myself, right? I'm feeling around and what I'm trying to really demonstrate for you, and that's this is why I never practice something that I'm doing. I never practice. I never, I never 
in advance try to figure out how to do solve the problems because I want you to watch me stumble. That's actually real. <laughs> like the stumbling is actually real. All right, so I'm going to remove this because I think we've got it. So you can see a little bit more detail. Um, and now I'm going to go in with a little bit more darker because I feel like I've kind of got my shapes. I'm going to go in with slightly darker. Now that's very dark ink. I don't want to go in quite that dark yet. So I'm adding a bit of water to my brush, but see how it's darker than what I've done. I'm going to go in and kind of darken, still watery darken. I'm going to like kind of paint in some of the darker areas. There's a little kind of light area to his paw. So that's why I'm doing this dark kind of light. Because I can see it kind of run, the paw kind of runs into the side of his face on this side. Yeah. Um, that drip is making me a little bit nervous because I'm on an angle. So I'm going to pull it off. Good morning. Good morning, oh, Diana. Diana. Hey. Welcome, welcome. Thank you. Uh, yeah. I haven't yet. Here's a really dark area, right? This, what I can really see and in this one is how much that triangle of the nose runs right to the edge of the face. There's no on this left side. So see how I'm kind of trying to reshape my darts. I'm trying to get a little bit darker here so that I can highlight this light. So it's weird. As I'm working in this area, I'm thinking about this area, right? I'm working here, I'm thinking about this. So as we look in that area, there's that beautiful second eye on the left. Mm -hmm. Yes, so, what is the shapes? Near the paw. Yeah, what's yeah. the shapes? So you're gonna look at the shapes. If you want me to, yeah. I mean, it's but really it's like just a, a line. Word, it, being able to preserve that dark line will matter, I guess, or you- Yeah, you I think this is a job for the bamboo pen, quite frankly. So yeah. we're not at that phase yet, but the bamboo okay. pen is where we're gonna get those lines in. Good observation. And it's good to observe, right? Like how, but notice how if I'm really doing this correctly, I'm like using my darks to highlight my lights. I'm thinking about that line of the eye. I think, and let's see here. What I also see, I don't want to draw on this too much because I don't want to wreck it. I can see that from here, everything's a little bit darker, right? Because of that the, it's like even the lights are darker. The lights, the light here is darker than the light up here because that's where the plot turns around. So I'm going to try and preserve everything down here. Um, this half of the paw is going to be at least that dark. And things up here, with some maybe darks coming up in like this, right? But this part up here is gonna stay light. So I'm always having to think, this is what I, I was really, I've been talking to a BBC <laughs> producer who's interested in doing a thing on drawing and she's been asking me help for help on what, like how you talk about it. And I'm like, the, the, drawing is the only thing I know where I'm constantly thinking about the thing that I'm not drawing as I'm drawing the thing. Right? Like it's, I'm constant. I know that sounds ridiculous because it's just it's like a ridiculous <laughs> way of talking about it, right? But I'm constantly thinking about the thing next to the thing. And that is, a, that is something I have to kind of remind myself of, right? I really have to remind myself of it. Um, I don't want to get too dark here because I know that this is going to have to be darker. So I'm keeping this very light. Um, I'm kind of thinking maybe I'm going to, I'm going to really have to use my, my bamboo pen, I think, to get this, but notice how I'm trying to kind of lock in where this eye actually is. That's helping a little bit. Maybe trying to get a little bit of that line that Tina was talking about. There we go. I did it a little bit, right, with my pen here. It's slightly darker. 
I love him so much. Mm -hmm. There's a nice little dark kind of piece there. So notice as even as I add these slightly darker lines, I haven't even gotten to my um, serious, like, you know, hard lines yet. See what this is doing. For my line, I love how this uh, cheetah is starting to emerge, right? You can also see that like mostly it's kind of a medium in here. So I'm very lightly darkening. So see these lines that I put in that were not the right lines. They actually, most of them I can just kind of blend in. I'm doing this very light wash over the areas that are white, but not, but in shadow. So I'm, I'm leaving the, let's see, where are the areas that are not in shadow? I think this will help you. So I'm going to show them to you. So this area is not in shadow. Um, this area is not in shadow, right? These areas are super light. So these are the areas that you don't, and then hold here. Oh, you're so cute, right? That area is light. These are light, but they're they're shadowier. Maybe this part is kind of in shadow. No, sorry, this part is not in shadow, but the part next to it sort of is. Can you see that? So I'm going through the areas that are not the light areas that are not in um, that are in shadow. And I'm kind of, I'm painting, I'm painting them into just a very light wash because they have to be slightly. Darker. And that also helps see how that's starting to like kind of. Pace up so it's easy to get kind of overwhelmed by the. Uh, by all the detail, but really you can start with these little light washes. We'll highlight things as we get darker, we'll be able to highlight certain things. I kind of like how this guy is looking, even though he hasn't got, um, Let's take a picture of him, although I don't want to wreck the. Here, I'm going to take a picture of this. Oh, Cyrus, this is looking great. You got it, honey. Uh, just mm -hmm. stop this. You want yeah. these to line up, right? Okay. Yeah, it's e it's hard. I have to. I had to actually give myself a border on this side so that I would stop. Can you see that? There's like I... a little border here, so I wouldn't go too far. I totally get it. These are looking great, you guys. They're so fun. You're a good teacher. I'm trying. I'm not always the good. But I'm the person that teaches the teacher. If the I students want, are better, the teacher I want you up. to do well. That is absolutely true. I have a great yeah. desire that you guys do well. Everybody it's can teach. It's important to me. And it's important for me to me that you understand what's happening to you. I don't, I you can see why most teachers don't even bother because it's really hard to explain. <laughs> Right, uh, most art teachers are like, uh, like, uh, it's hard to explain the different brain processes that are at play. Uh, but I think it's important to understand that, to understand that what you're building is a structure upon which you continue to add. And at this point, I might move over to my bamboo At this point, to get some kind of lines. And so at this point, I might come in over right here, right? Just to get a little bit of more strength, of more of strength. I know I'm, I'm gonna have to keep dipping my pen. I notice I test it and then I lose it. I'm doing my 
I've noticed that if you dip your uh, pen in the water, in your, in your ink water like this, you can sometimes get a little bit more, but sometimes it gets too drippy, but you can get a little bit more, let's see. Right? Okay. And then I can see. So I want to really make sure. Uh, Number one, I can see that where my this line here, I'm going to actually sketch this thing because I think this is an important correlation to me. I haven't, uh, if I draw a line straight across, the eye comes up like this and down like that. Here it's straight. So once I put Once I add this in, I need to line this up. So see where I had my eye <laughs> and where I'm actually putting it? It's totally different, right? I wanna make sure these line up. And because there's all this sort of natural variation in the cheetah, right, in furred skin, this line up here is not that problematic. We can do things to, I notice there's a couple lines up here like that. There's things we can do to kind of mask and disguise that. So now I'm like, I don't wanna to do too much, but I like kind of coming down here. Right, because I don't want to lock myself in. I, I like to think of it as um, we're negotiating, right? Where, where things are still. So I don't want to really lock myself in with my darks until I know I still might muck it up. That's the thing about it. I'm not doing this all the way across, but I'm looking at kind of where the, where the, Guy is leaning. There's a strong line here. I want to define. Yeah, mostly just dipping my bamboo pen in the water now. And now here is where I start to sketch in. So see how carefully I'm going about this. Mm -hmm. Notice that these are not equal. This one is way longer and it kind of has a different shape. Right. So slowly my beastie comes to life. See how just that little bit, I'm kind of, notice how the chin is a little bit to the right. There's a little angle right there. I'm trying to get. I love how this is coming out. Look at how, look at how the painting starts to come to life as we begin to sketch in some of these things. Now I'm gonna go back to my brush and try and add in some more of the darks. Mm. Now I kind of have my pen mark. Like, can I do this? Can I go in here, right? Like a little paw. And push that in. This is very thin, but uh, here. 
I often kind of lean my, and I'm going to kind of score up the edges with my brush a little bit, right? Let me get a little bit more. This comes down just a few. Maybe I want to come here. And maybe I want to come here. And emphasize this line by darkening here. Oops. It's very kind of hit to the four in value and shading here. I love this shape. I love that. <laughs> that, that paw shape. It looks like right? a tree, a bodai tree to me. <laughs> it really does, doesn't it? It's so yeah. great. So now I'm kind of going into the darkest areas. I'm still avoiding, I'm darkening the darkest areas. I'm still avoiding the lighter ones. But I'm kind of darkening that inner palm shape. I can always go back in and do more later. Oh, I didn't. Well, I wonder if I could do this with a brush. Let's see. Ah, I don't think so. <laughs> There's one more thing I'm going to do. I'm going to sketch in, dip my brush. I'm going to use my Picamber pen, kind of sketch in. Here, right, that outer shape might even add a little scruff there. And then this comes in like that. I can see. I do want that. Can we get that up? Oh, I might have mucked that up. All right, so I mucked that up. So how am I going to fix that? Let me show you how I'm going to fix that. I'm going to go in on this end and see how I just did that? I have to sharpen this angle. It's got to come in, a, it's got to fill in a little bit more. So I'm using my background. Oops, oh yeah, this has got to come in a lot more. Yeah, there we go. I'm using my background to bring this in. <laughs> There's my line. I wonder if I can cover it, we'll see. There's my original line. I'm going to go in the dark. Yeah, I think I did a pretty better job of that. I'm going to do a little bit more work before I try to define that part again. Don't do what I do, children. Learn, children, students, cute little, my <laughs> cute little students. Don't do what I just did. <laughs> Don't put that line in until you're sure you know exactly where it goes. Do you have your nickname for us? Or like Lady Gaga has her monsters. Do you have? I think of us? you as my cute little students. <laughs> <laughs> Like when she speaks with children. Yes, like my little darling. I it came from I have one student who is in his 70s and uh, no. he would always come to class going, I'm your little student, I'm ready, right? <laughs> As a joke. And so now I always think of like, oh my little student. Little students. Little students. Well, we're in your class, all that doesn't matter. <laughs> right, right. My little students, like doing better at this than me. Look at that. <laughs> yeah, um, when I first started teaching, I had a lot of worry about like the fact that there would be, I would have students that were more experienced artists than I was, right? And oh, how wow. could I teach somebody who was more experienced? And then I learned, oh, they have no idea <laughs> how to think about this. No problem. It's not about the skill level. It's about the actual thought process and the process and the technique, right? Wow. It's fascinating it's to me, but I was like nervous, you know, because it's real easy to say. And I'm sure there'd be students who do not really need me as a teacher, right? They, they, they then have, they wouldn't take the class, then would they? Right, exactly. I mean, that's just normal. But I was surprised at like how many um, students needed this help. 
But yeah. for God's, God's sake, good actors, they never stop. Right. Class. You can't. Exactly. Yeah, a, exactly, yeah. Diana. That's exactly it. They always have acting coaches. Yeah. Right. I just signed like, up for an oil painting class because I'm learning some new oil painting. I'm working with oil painting again and I want to, you know, bump up my game. Um, so it's interesting. Like, it, there's always um, uh, ways to learn. And, and in particular, it's not kind of about where you are experienced. I mean, it is, I don't think I could teach with no experience, but you know, it's not about skill level as much as it's about understanding conceptually what's going on. Mm -hmm. And that is an interesting. Are you guys starting to have fun with this guy yet? He's very charming. He's adorable. He's absolutely adorable. I'm now kind of going in with my brush. I'm playing with the pigs. With the pigs, Still, yes. I have to redo the nose. The nose. Uh, why? The nose you know? difficult. What's the problem? Yes, because I had the left side much higher than the right, and in ah. fact, it's frontal. Your uh, uh, Sandra, I did the same thing. If it makes you feel better on my first try, and <laughs> I, think, I want and to commend I think it's you on your analytical skills. Very good. On your honest. I got no. I often mess up. And I was thrown by the perspective. Yeah. I think. I think that's what um, happened. I don't know. Um, but it's good. That very great evaluative skills, Sandra. You have become the problems, right? You become an artistic problem solver. That's it. That's all it is. I was just, just about that. to show it to you, and then I looked at it. And, and then you went, what oh, the <laughs> right? What's wrong with the nose? Oh, it's the wrong <laughs> shape. How do I get it the right shape? Yep, I totally. That's wrong. Good. And mine's a little like Tony the Tigers. Tony the Tiger. He's a worshipper. Worshipper. Oh my God. Now I'm talking to this thing like it's my cat. Like it's very. <laughs> right. I call him Bushaboo. I call him Boo. A Boo. He's a Boo. -boo. A Boo. -boo. A -boo, -boo. <laughs> my Melissa is here and she's looking at me like, what the hell are you, <laughs> are you saying? <laughs> What's going on over there? <laughs> I'm like, oh, ooh. there's your boo. I think this little cheetah reminds me of Hermes. I, I, I think. <laughs> I think the best part of art is that you never stop learning. That's my comment. Melissa says the best part of art, did you hear that? She says the best part of art is you never stop learning. I'll have her pop over and she can show you her new um, jewelry designs. They're looking marvelous. Um, she's learning how to patina, which is really exciting. Oh, I love that. Oh my God, I'll show it to you. Yeah. I'll have her show you. Melissa, can you, at the end, can you come over and pop yeah. on her? Do you do it? So uh, how do you do it? It's a whole thing. There's chem it's chemistry, chemistry, oh, really? math, science. I mean, she did a show it to you. What? She's a jeweler. A jeweler. She's a jeweler. Yes. Yes. A we jeweler. share a studio and we we have a big show coming up, the two of us, in October. Oh, so we're getting ready for it, getting stock, and Melissa's getting ready to launch this new line of jewelry. That's good because everybody can't work with other artists. That's good. I'm an extrovert. I kind of need it. Yeah. I need you guys to. It's true. I need to have a, uh, I get really bored if I'm just by myself. <laughs> no. I'm just I'm bored. I get really bored. I think I'm the artists are like, this is the best thing in the world. I'm like, oh my God, I'm one or two days of it. I'm like, I've done, I've had it. I've had it. <laughs> get me. Yeah, yeah. I have to do it. I have to be by myself. I feel like I got my darks a little bit too crazy dark. So I'm going in before they dry with a paper towel and kind of scrubbing them out a little bit. And I like that better. So observe that although this cheetah has all these um, dark spots, they don't, having too much super strong dark automatically throws things forward. So kind of, I wonder if I could like, 
like the way Marie did this. That would work. I'm trying it. I have to breath. say, in case it helps anyone, one thing I learned doing the tiger and ink yesterday yes. is that you should get like the shading before you put the spots and the really black. Yes. Because yes. suddenly my ink, then it kind of washes over and kind of mixes. Exactly, Sandra. That's, and that's what I just showed you guys, actually, is get the shading. So we started with the values and then- Yes, exactly. Yes. You need the right. values in before you do you this. Be, yeah, really the base, the values underneath, right? Before you start doing the darker values. Good job, Sandra. I'll well, I found here. out a bit too late, but it worked. Right. <laughs> I mean, you know, what is too late, really, in this? <laughs> well, because I got because I'm I'm not using waterproofing. Yes. You guys are all doing watercolors, though, right? No, we're doing no ink. We're ink. You're doing ink. it out, mm -hmm. and I'm doing acrylic. What are you doing, acrylic? Yeah, your favorite. I'm an oil girl all the way. Kind of liking where this is going. Um, I'm going to stop so that I can uh, field any questions as you guys get to it. Um, trying some things out here. Right. And as and here's what Sandra of, said, yeah. which I think is really great. You're like, oh, I'm sorry, Sandra, I interrupted. What were you saying? No, so I can't see the top of your picture. So I can't see the, what you did for that left ear. Can you angle your camera? No, but, but your, your ear. Is it because there's a line of because um, no because it cuts off because your camera is too low. Your paintings, yeah. It your, doesn't look like that to me. That's why it's weird. okay. Now, now yeah, you see it. it? Okay, yeah. there you go. Okay, it's off a page. Okay. Yeah, yeah. That's so weird because on my screen I can see it. Oh, that's so strange. I guess it's because you're on an iPad. It might. So it cuts uh, maybe, off a little bit. It may be that the zoom takes a bit at the top. Mm. Oh, right. So not on my screen, but on your screen at well? Yeah, on my screen, it might do that. I didn't realize I was losing a bit of the top. Yeah, I think it's the, I, I think it's I'm on a desktop. For, no, actually, that's not true. I'm using a notepad. But yeah, who knows? There's all kinds of translation things, right, that happen in the... Yes, because they're probably different things, screens. right? Because everybody's got a different, like, thing that they're doing. Um, so I haven't done very many pictures of this, but I, I really feel it's pretty easy to see on the screen. Um, if anybody wants me to take a picture, let me know. But more likely, you're going to want to send pictures of what you're doing and send it in. And take to heart what Sandra said, which is like, I learned this yesterday right? By trying it and it didn't quite work out, right? Like I did, I tried something and it didn't work, but, but that doesn't mean, you know, I, 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 it isn't valuable. The great thing about ink is there's a super value. Now oh, I can see what I did here. Because it works a bit differently from what we usually do, you know? Yeah, it does. Ink is really great for moving you quickly. So if you have made a mistake, It's like kind of easier to correct. Or easier to get done and then try it again. It just, it kind of urges you forward like a galloping horse going back to the stable. If you've ever gone out in a horse ride, you'll notice the horses are kind of like resisting until it's time to turn around and go home. And then you're like, whoa! <laughs> Oh, right? like, God damn. <laughs> they do. It's like that's what ink does as a as a and you click them. Yeah. There we go. That's a little better. So I oh. used my notice. I kind of marked up this area and then I went, so I went back in to try and fix it. Um, what I'm really seeing is that this paw comes down like this. And then there's this kind of bend here. Yeah. I don't know if I totally got it. Might have to save that for the next attempt. Okay, I'm gonna send you a Matlia. I'm a bit behind okay. you guys. 
That's okay. I'm assuming everybody is. I'm kind of moving a bit fast so that you can. Oh, those are looking great, Diana. There you go. Nice blue, which fades into darker blue. Very there nice. Uh, look at the. Uh, if you look at the thread. Oh. You'll see what Diana's working on. I can look on this one. Sandra, I feel like his nose is too low. <laughs> the nose has been a nightmare. It's always, but that's like the, that's okay. It's the constant struggle, right? Like the nose is, if you look at the nose, two, three. So from the bottom of the, um, but, but yes, you, can, you can fix that because the forehead is a little bit too short too. So it's right. So you can do it here. I mean, you mean lower the top of the head? Lower the top of the head. And lower the eye a little bit. Lower the eye a little bit. Lower the eye. Lower the Which top eye? Of the head. Both of them? Yes. The left one, especially. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The left and the right. But if you bring this down, that's true. And then you bring this up because you haven't really sketched it too much. Yeah. This is going to have oh. to come up a little bit. Uh, I like your paw. Very nice. And I, I think you got this angle really good. You got this angle really good. So don't despair. Uh -huh. It's uh, interesting. So do I need to lower the right here as well? I do, right? The right ear? No, the right ear is uh, um, here. I'm going to run a straight edge across. I don't what's happening. Here's the right. Yes, yeah, the right ear has to come down a little bit. Yep. Has to come down. It's lower than this. Yeah. Yeah. It's a chunky monkey. It's a chunky monkey. Is he a baby? He's a baby. You want his mommy? He's a baby. He's a baby toast. Mm -hmm. Weird. Oh, okay. Actually, you know, it's not that the nose was too low, it's that I haven't made it tall enough. The animal? That's one way of looking at it. No, yeah. but I'm measuring now. Yeah. It... You brought it, well, it still means it's too low because you brought it. Well, no, the bottom is in the right place. It's just the top is in the wrong place. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's what that's, that's what, what I Diana think. was saying. No, the top of a nose. Yes, the top that's of the nose was is saying. in the wrong place. So I no, need she to wasn't. Two years. Oh. No, yeah, the ears were wrong too. So I don't think so. Mm -hmm. I'm measuring them. I think so. When I looked at it, well, I'm but anyway. Them. I messed up my thinking. What's happened? I think both things needed adjustment. Oh, you're right, Leo. The right here was too high. Yeah. And Diana's right. That's the beginning of the correction. You have to both <laughs> come down and you have to come up. Um, it's point. real easy to, to drift out of your original. So here's another thing that I want to really like emphasize. You think you've got your measurements right, and then you go in and you start adding stuff, and you're like, ah, oh, it's real easy to drift off your measurements. And it doesn't take much to drift off your measurements kind of with disastrous results. It really does. Because doesn't. when you see something doesn't, like, this place is in the wrong place vis-a-vis -vis that, it can, it can the be, one that you move is not necessarily the right one. Exactly, Sandra. Oh said so well. Does everybody get what she said? So what she's saying is this, if you don't have the right, so here's the tricky thing, locating exactly where the eye is, it's hard. And so it's easy to make, put that in the wrong place. The only things that we know for sure are these vertical distances, they help. So you have to return when you're measuring, you have to return to the proportions you know are correct. 
to be able to help, but also know it's just really easy to drift. What did Mae West say? I used to be Snow White till I drifted. Yeah. <laughs> um, until it's, what? It's, I used to be Snow White until I drifted. <laughs> until I dipped it. Drifted. <laughs> until I drifted. I used to be Snow White until I drifted. Uh, so it's easy to drift, of course. You know Mae West. Easy. That was my quote for my senior high school. Year. I love her. It used to be Snow White until I drifted. <laughs> <laughs> Go May. Uh, I don't think mine's going to get me. But... It's okay. Send it over. Maybe I can help. Here's my little cheetah. Yeah, because my little mind is here, my little cheetah. Oh, my little Here's my little cheetah. Here's my little guy. He's coming at you. You look up, you guys will see him. Hello, Hermes. Uh, if you're on an <laughs> iPad, you probably have to still shift. Anyway. Little Hermes. Let's see. Oh, Cyrus, this is looking great. This is a wonderful drawing. Um, the only thing is that you brought your leg down a little bit too far. Remember, okay. the leg kind of lines up with the ear. Every fist is all one. So either extend your ear out a little bit so it matches with the leg, right? Or bring the leg in. Yeah, or bring the leg in. But I think you could extend the ear out and it would look good to the right where it lines up and then just draw that line straight down. This is great, Osiris. This is a wonderful. You you totally got his little personality. My paper is all messed up, but I'll send it to you now. I love it. Thank you. <laughs> Sandra, you would have never done this back in the day. I am so proud of you right now. <laughs> back in the there you go. There you go. Now he's starting to start to, yes, yep, absolutely. Really. See what you can do. See how far you can go, Sandra, in the correction process. You might be able to get rid of a lot of these lines as you start to go through and, and, and paint. It doesn't matter if you get it perfect, but this is what I really love is that, Sandra, you'll totally send it over, even if you don't like, even if it's not perfect, just to show us. And this is much better. Um, also, I really like the angle of the paw. You totally nailed that. I really struggled with that. I don't even think at this point I quite have it right, but you really got it very well. Almost. Yeah. So, yep. Keep working. This is not a, this, this drawing is not lost. Oh, Cyrus, this might be my favorite drawing you've ever done. Really? For this class. It's great. Yeah, it's really oh, wow. great. He's wow, adorable. Like, like, show it to your grand. Be happy to know this. <laughs> show it. Show it to your grandchildren and see what they say. Yeah, show my it to therapist. your kids. Show it to your therapist. Show it to your kids. But really, if you want to know the real truth about is it a good drawing or not, show it to your kids. And if they like it, they will tell you. And if they don't like it, they'll be like, "What's that? What's that? <laughs> I don't know what that is." Do the pendulum, will they like it or no? Mm -hmm. Well, they'll just give you the real reaction. You know? When my therapist they don't care about your feelings. <laughs> I wasn't sure if I was going to be able to do it because of my brain thing. And she encouraged me to keep going. I'm like, I don't think I'm going to be able to handle the class. I just can't. I don't even understand what she's talking about. My am a member. So she's like, no, 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 you're going to be fine. Just go in there and I was telling her what a good teacher you were because she had so much patience with us. 
And well, you guys you are really doing the hard work. How can I not respect that? You're doing oh. such hard work. Listen, you've already distinguished yourself just by showing up. Quite honestly, most people don't show up. <laughs> they don't do most the work. Most people don't do the work. Most people don't show up. They don't do the work. You guys all do the work. You're all doing the work. This is more than half the battle. Not only do you do the work, you come every every week and do the work. You come sometimes more than once a week and do the work. That is the only thing that's really important here, doing the work. It's um, not important that you get it right because these are tough concepts and we have to learn them together. But it's important that you show up to try and learn. And there are people who will talk about it, but they won't do it. <laughs> and they live in their head. Yeah, well, everybody they does. In their head. Yeah, I know people. Right? We all do. Every but year. like, there are people who don't have the courage to show up and do the work. Because they think it's something easy until you have to do something. Like I tell singers that want to be vocalists, okay, so do you know you have to get up in the morning, go to the studio, you got to take care of your diet, you got to work your voice out, you need a voice. By the time you tell them, they're like, oh, yeah. So Beyonce didn't get to be Queen B for nothing. She worked right. at it. She oh, it. my God. Anybody does. Anybody does. But you know Never what? Worked. You guys are the Beyonce's of the Roman studio. <laughs> Everybody <laughs> here is a Beyonce. You've already showed That's up. Right. Everybody's a queen. Everybody's a queen. Everybody's a Beyonce. Beyonce. I always yeah, people Maya think it's going to come easy. Everybody thinks it's supposed to be easy. Like, oh, it's going to come easy. No, you got to, it's worse. Mm -mm. It's hard. So discipline. Oh, look at my little baby. Ah, look at this. This is the exact like I think. So this says productivity, <laughs> and behind here is crastination, and in front is productivity. So <laughs> Leah, are you am I following you on IG? I don't know. Do Let me look. I'm going on there now. Uh, I so I have two. I have my own for my. I have Leah Culver for my art, and then I have the Romy Studio for. I'm gonna do both. So two. which one? All of them. Both. both. The Romy Studio, and then uh, Leah Culver. I think I'm on the Romy Studio. I think you are in the Romy Studio, is there? I think I'm. On. Uh, can I, by the way, uh, uh how's everybody else? Is it called Roman? The Roman Classroom? No, the Romy Studio. Oh. The Roaming Studio. Mm. There it is. Gotcha. Okay, I'm following you on that. And the other is Leah Cohenberg. Yeah. K O H L E A H K O H. I got you. I know. Yes. I'm an excellent. I was a spelling bee contest. I could spell. See? The logic, everything is there. I feel like maybe tests are just dumb way to, no. to learn things, to, to show, right? They just don't. I'm a different kind. Oh, oh my gosh. For that. Wow, that's so cute. What's that? Look at this. You taught your thing and she didn't. My cheetah. I like my cheetah. With the ink and all of that. Um, I'd love to see what everybody else is doing. Anybody else want to send theirs in? All right, I'll send in the sec. All right, I like it. <laughs> <laughs>
Um, did I ever tell you, Bettina, did, have I ever told you I had this for a long time? I used to have five students and one of them was this little girl named Lola. Lola had, took lessons from like seven to nine with me. And she would always, I'd say, so send me a picture. And she'd go, hold on a minute. Wait just a minute. Wait just a minute. <laughs> Hang on. So now whenever somebody says, wait a minute, I hear in my voice, Lola. Hang on just a minute. Hold on there. Just a minute. Little birds. In a momento. In a momento. How many languages do you speak? Really? None. I'm such a. I'm such. I'm so lame that way. I'm a. I'm embarrassed at myself. Ah, there you are. Got you. I'm actually embarrassed at myself that I speak so few languages, that I don't speak any languages, considering I lived overseas for 10 years. I mean, I speak little spatterings of everything. And I always think that probably French would be the one. Well, I know I have a study partner in Sandra if I ever decide I want to do it, like take it seriously. But uh, I, I have, I'll be dead honest, I've been really lazy about it. Uh, yeah. Oh, lovely. Trying to think I think the one thing you need here is Spanish. Yeah, Spanish. Well, and there's probably a little Spanish. Probably everybody has a little Spanish, right? You know, Diana. Yeah. Do you know what a principal um of the schools here not in Van Nuys told me Very that nice. Spanish nice. is not the lead language. It's Mandarin Chinese. I believe oh, that. Wow. That's what so, she said. I have a couple of but that doesn't help us because it's not not to who we. But did she say? Did she say That's this is what when, when you say the lead language, you mean this is the most popular language for kids to learn? That's because no, of it's the language that's being spoken. No, she I said think. that's the norm. That's the upcoming language that they're for, they're bracing them. Yeah, what, exactly. I mean, you're talking about two different things. One of them is to talk in the United. Is to talk in the United States if you want to talk. Bettina, Bettina, um, look at this. Look at this. Your arm, if it makes you feel better, I had. You'll see it's, yeah, it's, it's, yep, it's big. Narrow okay. it, yeah. A little bit wider here, right? So bring your line, it's wider. It's wider here. And it's your uh, you have this needs to be a little bit wider, You're, right? Because it needs to narrow, right? You have your lines are parallel. Sure. And that's perspective. Uh, Julia, do you want to send yours in? Mm. Come in. Send it in. It's a bit of a mess today, but. Oh, wonderful. No, no, he's in good shape. Uh, I'm just looking to see if there's anything. I think this is still too thick. So can you bring your dark in here a little bit to yep. do you see how okay. this yeah. does it? I this and this is a tough one. So this goes straight out. Let me see if I can show you guys how this works. Yeah. This goes I, like oh. I struggle with this too. So don't like feel bad about it. I'm gonna show you the trajectory. It's like that. And then it's like that. And then it's like that. Yeah. So just use your dark background to kind of muck it in a little bit. Uh, the nice thing is, but I love the way you've got these. I love these like kind of mid tones that you've got splashed through here. And then what I can see you're figuring it out is that you can kind of add in these dark splotches, right? The sort of spots. 
in places to sort of lighten where the transition happens between light and dark, right? So there's like, you can kind of pull a splotch half between the darker, half between the lighter. And that gives us here, I'm putting in a few. We can even speak English and try to learn. Yeah. This you could do. Uh, but that's okay. I, as you see, I don't exactly have it right either. Don't know if I can fix I don't think I can fix mine. I think I've done it, but I can. But I like the way, and I like this little glow of the lights that you've left on the paw. I like how you use your dark to shape your um, cheetah. Good job, you guys. It's yes, harder. It feels, it feels <laughs> so, it's harder than it looks, isn't it? <laughs> it feels, it's so funny. It's such an intellectual, the intellectualism of drawing is such a different way of experience logical thinking. It's just a different logical system. And it's so, it's just so complex. There's a lot going on. Um, let's see. I'm just joking around with you. <laughs> yeah. <Listen. laughs> I mean, come on. Didn't it look come like he on. needed some... He needed some sunglasses. He, he totally sunglasses. did. Come on, let's <laughs> now the one thing we can't really do is get white right in here for the white whiskers. Uh we either have to use gouache for that or pastel or a pastel pencil that's white. Or you can do kind of a very light Pencil. wash so that it's kind of reads as a gray. It's not exactly right, but that's what we can do. Oh, Julia, it looks great. Mm -hmm. That was good feedback, Leah. It's What's, oh, to use the spots and to, yes just to create those shows. oh there you go sandra um, much good. like much improved much mm. improved you thought you lost this one but you totally hadn't well, if you want to have... you can use the background or you don't have to you could totally keep it white it never hurts to keep things light when we're working with ink that's why i'm kind to... of hesitating to put stuff up here because i don't feel like i need the dark to shape anything um that's very nice that Boy is perfect, Sandra. Yep, really? she really nailed okay. it. Yep, she really nailed it. Um, and so that's the, <laughs> I love those sunglasses. <laughs> it's so great. Oh my God. Can I, uh, you guys, can you finish this? And can I use, can you send me your finish? Can I use them on an Instagram post today for the Roaming Studio? Why would you want to? Yeah. Yeah. Um, it's a process. It's showing process. You're all doing way better than you think. I swear to God. But if you don't want me to use yours, I don't have. To. No, no, you're very welcome to. I mean, okay. I'm not. Yeah, I know. It's not. I mean, it's not your hit. It's funny because some drawings turn out. But there you go. Yeah. See that, Julia? I mean, my tiger is more. better than that. Yeah. Uh, it is not finished. Um. Great. Great job, you guys. Julia, great corrections. Yeah, it helped, didn't it? That was good feedback. Thank so you. you get a few darks. So what happens is we lay in these lights, right? And then so there's a light dark and it looks very sharp. And then you soften it by sprinkling in the dark every right across so that we don't notice these lines so much. That's exactly what happens. We don't notice the, the sort of... And come on, that dude. Yeah, I think people are California in. tiger. He's got to have glass. He's got to be cool, California tiger. What? Well, the sun is too hot. All right, you, you guys. It. Let us. Um, if you want to, I'll show you what Melissa's working on right now. Hold on. I'll. I, the first thing I want to do, we're going to remove the spotlight. 
Oh, excellent, Bettina, great corrections. Fantastic, that was a big difference. Okay, so go ahead and hold up your pieces so that we can see them. Yeah, my color doesn't come through very well. Yeah, that's okay. We've got it in the thread. Ah, yeah. Oh, hold on. oh Cyrus, hold him up, hold him up. Oh, you wait a minute, our... I was trying to do something. Okay, hold on. Are you putting on the Roman studio and all that? Yeah. I got my reputation. Diana, I love this dark coming from the, I like these light images coming from the dark. Look how powerful that is. We're Thanks. waiting. Look, Osiris, look up. There we go. Yeah, baby. <laughs> I am so happy with, I'm so Come happy on. with you guys. Wonderful That guy's got to have some glasses. Come on, dude. Yeah. All right. So now I'm going to turn off uh, the recording.